Well, we're glad you're back. Are you glad you're back? Yeah, right. I mean, it's, it's good to get back. It's good to be back together. I mean, online's okay, but it's not like being together. And as, as we continue to move forward, you know, more people will be back and, and uh, it, you know, it'll, it'll help us. It's just being together with people that you know, like, and love, always helpful. So those of you that are watching with us on Facebook this morning, good morning. Glad to have you with us as well. Just so you know, I know you can't see it. We are practicing social distancing. We rearrange our auditorium. That's the great thing about seats is that you can move them around and spread them around. And uh, we, we've done that. So all five of our congregations have taken the same steps. If you go to the other building where Will and Martin are, same thing. If you go over to where Carlos is, same thing. Uh, Noreto's congregation set this up. I, I talked to them. They said, okay, we'll set it up, Pastor. And so uh, we, we, we've all been excited about being able to, to get back. They've tested it out a couple of times last Sunday, and so we knew it would all work so that uh, we, can, we can continue a little further into the process of you know, staying safe. You know, though, reality is that we live in this world that's, that's full of turmoil and, and injustice. And it's not the first time in the history of humanity that we've, we've been through this. I mean, we went through a world war where we had turmoil and injustice. And, and we've, we've gone through a civil war where we had turmoil and injustice. We've gone through a, a revolution where we had turmoil and injustice. We've gone through plagues. We've gone through pandemics. As, as mankind, we have been doing that since almost since humanity. Since Adam and Eve, we have been in this struggle between turmoil and injustice and, and, and troubles in our world. It, it's, been, it's been here. And, and, you know, we've also learned along the way that when you look for it, any of those things, you can find it. If you want to find trouble, you can find trouble. If you want to find injustice, you can find injustice. But on the other hand, when it finds us, it's a different story, isn't it? it, it it's like when we get sick, it's a different story. When, when we've been wronged, it's a different story. When, when, we've, when we're in some kind of turmoil, it, it's a different story. See, when it finds us, it's, it's different. And, and we've kind of discovered that in, in what's going on in our world right now. And, and it's nothing that we take lightly. It's nothing that we just say, oh, you know, well, it, but, it, but it's real. It's real for people because we know, because we've all felt it during the last 80 days, there's... If you're honest with yourself, you look in yourself, you, you know you, there's, there, you felt overwhelmed sometime, like, wow, I, I don't know what, what, what's going to happen. Uh, we, we felt alone. I mean, you know, in the case of, of social distancing, sometimes we're, we've just kind of been us at home, and that's it. I mean, we can't even see extended family. We can't see our neighbors. We can't see our friends. And, we, and we, you begin to feel like, wow, I'm all alone. And then we feel we feel abandoned sometimes, like nobody cares. Nobody cares. And and then of course there's fear. We we feel afraid. We we look out our door today, and or we look on our news, and we uh, we drive down a street, and and there's all these fearful things that that are going on in our world. And so it is it is very very real for us. And it's no doubt that we 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 can feel afraid. Uh, you know, as we say in Texas, scared. You know, uh, but but reality is this. Reality is this for us as the people of God. This is the thing that the people of God have, Christ followers have, that nobody else has. And many times they don't understand it. They don't get it. They think sometimes we're being complacent. Sometimes they think that we don't care. Sometimes they think we're not going to speak out. But reality is, is, is there's another side to the story. See, because we know we're not hidden. We know that none of the things that are going on in our world are somehow not seen by God. Because sometimes that's people's cry. Well, nobody cares because nobody's doing anything because you, you just want to ignore it. You want to ignore it. We know as God's people that there's not a moment. There is not one even blip on the radar of life that God that we have been hidden from God. That God doesn't know our struggles, our very cares. Even, I know this is hard for some people to believe, especially they don't believe in God. Even the very hairs on our head, God knows if we lost one today 
or several. He knows because He cares. He's there for us. We, we, we are His prized possession. We're, they're, they're, we look at our world and we have to realize there, there's no reason for us to be hopeless. There's no reason for that because God cares. Even if we run into injustice or tragedy or turmoil or, or any of the things that, that are going on in this world, we, we have to know internally that, that God's there for us. Even The Bible even tells us that we don't even have to speak it out loud. That underneath our breath, God hears us. Wow. Wow. And I, I look at that and go... What better thing to have in your life than God in times like this? When you think about it, what, what better? I mean, it, it, the world is, is, is crying out and they depend on this and they depend on that and, and they don't know whether they're hurt or not, but yet we know that God hears us. Well, if you've been following along with us, whether on Facebook or, of course, we hadn't been here except a time or two where we came and tested everything, make sure it was all going to work when we come back, is that we've been talking about what happens when God moves us out. See, over the history of mankind, if you hadn't had been with us through the process, we started a series several weeks ago where, where God, peop, God's people and people in the earth have, this is not the first time to be social distanced. This is not the first time to have to shelter in place. That's happened. Think back to Noah. For a year, Noah and his family had to shelter in place on the ark so that God could give birth to a new humanity. Think about Joseph. 17 years in prison for something he didn't do. Trying to uphold the right values and the right morals. He shel God had him sheltered in place, but God brought him out. Think about Abraham. Abraham's a totally different story. Abraham's life was good and life was great. His his. his his wealth and influence was growing everywhere in his community. And God, but God called him out and said, I, I want you to go on a trip to a place you've never seen, to something you've never known about before. God called him to a different place. Think about Naomi and Ruth. For 13 years, Naomi had to shelter in place in Moab because there was a famine back home. And she lost her husband, and she lost her two sons, and she was left alone in a strange land. But yet God moved her out, moved her back home, and Ruth went with her. And a whole story was birthed out of that experience. Last week, we talked about Joseph and how that he had to move out. And then we talked about Moses, how that Moses was a miracle in the sense that the Pharaoh of the land, for no reason except his own insecurities, decided he would kill all the Hebrew boys. But, no, but, but Moses escaped and wound up being adopted by the Pharaoh's daughter and grew up in Pharaoh's household. And he lived in conflict, though, because he knew he wasn't an Egyptian. He knew he was really a Hebrew. And at one point, Injustice got the best of him. He saw an Egyptian severely treating a Hebrew person. And Moses jumped in and he killed the guy. And then he buried the evidence. But then the next day he ran into two Hebrews fighting over each other and he called them on the carpet and they called him back on the carpet. And Moses immediately knew, oh no, everybody knows. And he fled. And for 40 years, he lived in the wilderness until, as we talked about last week, God called him out. But when God called him out, he just made excuses. He, 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 he made excuses to God. But, but God didn't take his excuses because God had another plan. And today we're talking about when, when God moves us out, we get to have a fresh start. If we'll follow God out, we get to have a fresh start. 
So as God told Moses that back in this experience, if you remember at the burn, burning bush, what he was going to do. In Exodus chapter 6, if you want to follow along with us, we're going to reread in the first nine verses. God's having this conversation with, with, with Moses about, here's how it's going to play out. A little different than probably what Moses was thinking, but here, here God tells him, here's how it's going to work. In verse 1 of chapter 6, he said, Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you, you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. Up to this point, Moses had been thinking it was all on him. And he was struggling with that because he's like, I don't know how to do this job. And he missed the point where God said, I'm going to do it. So God reminds him, he says, you, you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he will let them go. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. Now, the idea and picture there is, of course, that he was going to eventually be forced, eventually be forced to throw them out of the country. Now, people, if you've ever been thrown out, I've been thrown out a few times, it's hard. It's easy to, to get angry. It's easy to get vindictive. It's easy to be bitter. It's easy to be hard. And we're going to find out that's exactly what happens. Even though they were getting set free, they were going to have trouble with being free. Pharaoh, on the other hand, he was going to be upset with having to let them go. And then he's going to get, he's going to have, you know, release remorse that he let them go and he wants to go and get them back. But God tells Moses, he said, it, it's, it's, it's going to, you're going to get thrown out and it's not going to be necessarily pleasant. But God said, I'm going to move you out and I'm going to set you people free. Notice he goes on to say, and God went on to speak to Moses and said, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob as God Almighty. He said, but my name, Yahweh, Jehovah, was not known to them. And I have established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan the land of their pilgrimage, a land in which they were strangers. And I've also heard the groanings of them whom the Egyptians have kept in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. See, God doesn't forget. God doesn't let it go. Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am Yahweh, Jehovah. I am the Lord. I am the sovereign king. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. And I will redeem you. I will buy you back with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. And then you shall know, I am Yahweh. I am the Lord your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you to the land which I swore unto Abraham, and to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it to you as a heritage, as an inheritance. I, Yahweh, am the Lord. So, Moses spoke to the children of Israel. Verse 9, Moses spoke to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moses. Notice why. Because of the anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. Wow. They were going to get a fresh start, but they couldn't hear it. They couldn't see it. They didn't know what it was going to look like. Now, we know that's not uncommon. You go to any prison and you talk to people inside of a prison, you will find that many times the people in the prison are return, are return offenders, repeat offenders. Because when they got out, they couldn't stay out because they couldn't live in society. We know that to be true. We have a name for it, the battered wife syndrome. 
when, when women are, are mistreated by their husbands and beaten and sometimes within inches of death and, and, and they get out of that, but then they go back. And they get out and they go back. And they get out and they go back. Why? Because the anguish of their spirit and the cruelty of that bondage keeps them there. Can you imagine how Moses must have felt that moment? He said, I've got great news. We're getting out. God's going to deliver us. We don't want to hear it. We'd rather stay here. Matter of fact, we know they dealt with that. This wouldn't be the first time that they will say, uh, we let's let's go back. We'd rather have we'd rather have that. After miracle, after miracle, after miracle, they they were still saying, let, let, let's just go back. Let's just go back. See a fresh start. Everybody talks about it when when we when you've had troubles. You know, anybody that's ever been bankrupt, they they the, one of the reasons they do bankruptcy is to what? Get a fresh start. If you ever get out of debt, you think, oh, I've got a fresh start. Guess what happens to most people? They wind right back up in debt, right? A fresh start looks good. It sounds good. But we struggle with a fresh start because we oftentimes don't know what to do with it. Because oftentimes we discover, and we hear people's story and people struggle, is a fresh start has a lot of problems. It kind of sometimes has has things we weren't looking for. Just like, the, just like the, the, the Israelites in Egypt, they were like, that sounds good, Moses, but we're not quite sure about how all that's going to work because there's a lot of us, and we don't know how, what that's going to look like. And even as they made the, the fresh start journey, they, they wanted to look back. See, there, there was going to be a lot of problems of them getting out getting out of where they were. they were. I'm sure as they looked around at all the thousands and hundreds of thousands of them that lived there, they were thinking like, how are we going to get all, all of us out of here? There's a lot of us to take this trip. There were a lot of problems. But in getting out, there were problems. I mean, their economy collapsed. I mean, God sent these plagues on the people, the people that that, that they were responsible to, that they were in bondage to, and, and life got hard. Matter of fact, Pharaoh decided one day, he said, Okay, look, enough is enough. You're doing this job. I, you, you, now you, we've been furnishing you the supplies and all the things you need. Forget that. You've got to furnish it too, and you still got to produce as much. You can imagine at that moment that the people were looking over there at Moses going, really? This is, this is what you call deliverance? This is what you call deliverance? No. See, a fresh start oftentimes has a lot of problems, and we want it, but we really don't want it. But God calls us out to a fresh start. He was calling these people out to a fresh start. God said, I remember this covenant that I made over 400 years ago, and it's time for you people to come out and get a fresh start. A fresh start often means, for, for all of us, the marking of an end to open the way to the new. Well, we, we know that. We know anybody that's been involved with anybody with addiction, you know that there has to come a point where it stops. It has to stop. They, 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 can't, they can't keep kind of participating. They have to stop. They have to bring it to a close. There has to become an end to it so a new can start. Wasn't any different for God's people. They had to become an end. And, and as they begin to escape, and as they begin to walk out of Egypt, think, singing, and then they walked out there, three days journey, and then they ran into this ocean. And they're, they're looking back, and they can see this cloud of dust coming. And it's like, hey, we're trapped. It's over. They began to complain. They began to, oh no, we're coming. You've, let's just go back. Hurry, everybody turn around, let's go back. That was their idea for many of them. Because see, God brought them there to the sea. And then Moses put forth his rod and opened up the sea. And the Bible says they walked across on dry ground. And Pharaoh and them said, okay, let's keep going. We're going to catch them. They can't get away from us. They're on foot. There's a bunch of them. We're on horses. We're chariots. We're going to catch them. And as they got out in the middle of the sea, God closed the sea up and drowned them. All of them. 
that passage, that crossing of the sea, marked the end of being in Egypt. God showed them, said, no, we're not, you're not going back. But they didn't no more get across and get settled down that then they began to say, let's go back because they began to get hungry. They began to run out of water. They began to, to doubt. And it's often that way in a fresh start that even when we cross over, the crossing over and the closing off of the sea of going back becomes hard and difficult. It's not all rosy like we think. And just like it was with Israel, it's always with us. There's always doubters, always murmurers. There's people that are going to doubt that this is the right thing to do. We'll even oftentimes doubt, was that really the right thing to do? Should I really have done that? Should I have really taken that step? Should I have really gone there? As we see this happen and playing out in our economy, seeing it in our neighborhoods, we, we see that, 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 that even though that we have found a way out of some of this, that people are still doubting, they're still murmuring. Because, because people's idea of freedom and being free and having a fresh start looks different than it really is. And so they begin, to, they begin to move across the desert, all hundreds of thousands, some people estimate millions of them. They begin to move across, but, but, but people doubted and they murmured and they complained about all the things that were, were going on. Because they heard the part about a land that flows with milk and honey. They just thought it was going to be tomorrow. How often is that true in our life about a, a start over, a fresh over? Oh, well, we'll just flip the switch here and tomorrow it's all going to be better. I mean, that's kind of what we thought when the, when the governor finally said, okay, y'all can start back. Okay, good. It's all, going to be, it's all going to be great. And then we find out, well, not really. It's really not all great yet. Some people have come down with the virus since then. Then we had all the other things happen with the riots and all that. It's like, wait a minute, what happened? It was supposed to be a time to go forward and rejoice, and then it turned into, it turned into a great turmoil for people. Wasn't any different for the Israelites. What we forget about a fresh start is that it's a journey. It's a journey. See, as, as they walked across the wilderness, there was, a, there was an opportunity for them to let go of their baggage. Because see, they brought, they'd brought Egypt with them. While they had left Egypt physically, they still had Egypt in them. And that's so true in our lives. As we, as we start anew and fresh and things, there, there are still things that, that are back there that, that we want to bring with us. We want to bring with us. There were, there were people there that wanted to go back. There were people there that wanted to return to worship the God of Egypt. There were people there that wanted to go back to the economy, even though it was bad, because they're looking out there going, we have no economy here in the wilderness. So God, God solved it. God said, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Every morning when you get up and go outside your tent, there's going to be fresh manna, a fresh gift from God laying in front of your tent. You're not going to have to work for it. You're not going to have to sweat for it. You're not going to have to do anything. It's just going to be there. Wow. Well, guess what? Some of them complained about that. Some of them tried to hide some of it and think, oh, good, I'm going to, I'm going to store this up and found out that was a bad idea because it produced worms and it stank. And they realized, whoop, can't do that. And then there was the water issue. Oh, we're going to run out of water. And God gave them water out of the rocks. But all of that was to help them get rid of Egypt. They left it behind, but they carried it in their hearts. And God knew they needed to go on a journey. So a fresh start's not like flipping the light switch and the light's coming on. It's more like a slow process. And for them, it was a slow process. But not only did a fresh start require the, a journey to get rid of the baggage, because eventually it did. Matter of fact, it got to a place where, where even those who wouldn't believe wound up dying in the wilderness. A whole generation of Israelites had to die off because they wouldn't let go of Egypt. They wouldn't let go of Egypt. And God said, well, okay, I guess the only thing we can do is take a 40-year trip here and wait for all this generation to die off before I take them into the promised land. Because you see, you can't take the old into the new 
and have new. You only can take new into the new. So to do that, God brought them to His mountain and said, I'm going to give you a new set of guidelines to live up by life. And it is amazing that those ten guidelines, the ten commandments, the ten laws of God have permeated governments and civilizations all over the world for generations and generations and generations. Centuries and centuries, the Ten Commandments has served as a guide of how do you live life in an orderly fashion. And God gave it to these people. He said, here, here they are. I want you to live. But not only that, not only did God do that for them, He even gave them societal guidelines. He said, here's how you be a special, unique people. So you can be like everybody else if you want to. That's not hard. But, you, but to be different, you, you need to do this. And God gave them, as we, as we look in the Bible, we know God gave them a whole lot of guidelines. What to eat, what not to eat, when to work, when not to work, when to do this, when to do that, when, what to wear and what not to wear. And, and how, do you, how do you deal with issues in your life? You deal with it like this and this and this. God gave them these whole guidelines and they became a different people than the world had ever seen. Now, granted, that differentness has caused them a lot of problems in the world. A lot of hatred. People hate them just because. But it's not any different than anybody that takes a new start. Just sometimes you don't know it. See, because people don't want you to be new and fresh. They want you to stay old and entangled in the things that they're entangled in. Because when you do it, then that means it can be done. When, when you cross over, that means they could cross over. When you change, then that means they could change. And there's just a lot of people that don't want to do that. See, there's a lot of people in our world right now that, that, that they want justice, but, but, but they don't want to do what it takes to have justice. They want freedom, but they don't want to do what it takes to have freedom. There's a, there's a lot of people that, that they want God, but they don't want to do what God says to have God. They want their God. Egypt, the, the Israelites tried that, and it didn't work out too well. But it also means, it also, a fresh start also means there's a new way to live. There's a new way to live. And Israel found that out. They found out that if they would just trust God, put it all in the hand of God, that life would be different. That they would fly, find this place that flowed with milk and honey. They would find this place where they, their people would grow. They would find this place where they could live at peace. They would find this place. They would find this place. So you see, when, when God moves us out as, as Christ followers into a world full of turmoil and trouble and struggle, it takes a fresh start. We, we can't take the old with us into the new. We, we can't expect people that, that are in bondage to live not in bondage. We have to help take them on a journey. We have to help them get there. We have to help them find their way. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be like flipping on a light switch. They're not going to like it. They're going to fight against it. They're, they're going to hate you for it. They're going to talk about you for it. But God says, just, just keep on the journey. Keep taking them through the journey, and they'll find a new life. They'll find a new life. And so today, as, as we kind of begin to keep moving forward, we, we, have a, we have to make a decision about that. I mean, when, when, when we come to the place where we want a fresh start, we have to realize that we have to take the step to do it. Just like the people of Israel, they had to take the step. They had to say, okay, Moses, we get it. We're going with you. Let's go. And they begin to walk off with Moses. As he began to walk toward the Red Sea, they began to walk with him. They realized that there was a moment of freedom for themselves. So that's true in our world today. As we, as we move beyond all this things that's gone on, it gives us an opportunity as the people of God to have a fresh start with, other, with people, a fresh conversation, a new conversation, a different conversation to help them move ahead. But know this, that many people in our world right now, they, 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 they're living life just like this. There's a hand right up in their face, just like, just like the Israelites were in Egypt. 
There's bondage and cruelty up in their face so much that they can't see the answer. It's right on the other side. But yet God wants to lead them through that. God wants to lead us through that. So we can choose to, to walk alone and probably find ourselves right back in Egypt. Or we can choose to walk together as a people of God to go out into the world and make a difference. We can choose to do that. So let's pray together this morning. Father God, thank you today that we have the opportunity to hear your word. That over the course of time that you have been faithful to share your words with us, the truth with us. That you would bring us to a place to where we would hear the command of God, the very voice of God, the very heart of God to tell us this is how you live life. This is how you become a unique and distinct people. Thank you, God, that you would give that to us, that you would never let us go, that through the course of our history as human, of humans, we have failed and we have rebelled and we have turned away and we have turned aside, and yet, God, you keep coming back to us because you hear our whisper underneath our breath to cry out to you. You've heard our suffering. You've heard the injustice, and God, you just keep calling us to yourself. Come follow me. Come follow the great I am. Walk with me and you'll find freedom. God, thank you that you're that kind of God for us. So God, today, if we, as we come, kind of close out this service today, God, we're reminded as God's people, as Christ followers, as a church, that we have to be that example. We have to be those people that are willing to go with you and have a fresh start to move out into a, into a world that is crying out because of the bondage and the cruelty that's going on, and to be the leader, to say, come, let's follow God. Let's cross over. God, we pray for those who struggle with that today, who's, who's have a, who have that hand in their face, that they can't see past it. They can't pe see past the bondage. They can't see past the suffering. They can't see past their the, what they're up and in life, they can't see past it and, and know that grace is just right on the other side. God, help us to help them. Help us to speak for you. Help us to help people see that the hope of the world is Jesus. God, help us as a church to do that. I pray for perhaps that one today that's watching us today that needs Jesus. They've realized that there is hope. There is a way out. There is a fresh start. God, I pray for them today that they would confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that, that Christ can save them and redeem them. I pray for that today for them. But also, dear friend, if you're watching that, I want to share with you that it's not going to be easy. It'll be glorious, but it won't be easy. So God bless us today as we go forth. We pray blessing upon our church family, our other congregations, then meet here throughout the week. We, we pray for our, our sisters and brothers across the world that, God, you would bless them and keep them and make your face shine upon them. We pray it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.